So we've got this polynomial here, f of x is equal to x cubed minus x squared plus 9x minus 9. Find the degree, well that can be done in one step. That is, you look at the exponents, the highest exponent is the winner. Part a, the degree is 3. <clears throat> the degree tells you the most number of roots that it can have. So if you set this thing equal to 0 and you solve for x, there can be as many as 3 answers. So how many roots does it have? And are those roots real? Well, there's a few ways we could do this. One is you could set it equal to 0. And because of those nines, that gives me the idea that we could probably factor. This would need to be done with factor by grouping, where you group these two together, factor out whatever you can, group these two, two together, and factor out whatever you can. So from the first pair, it's possible to factor out an x squared. It would leave behind x minus a 1. From the second pair, it's possible to factor out a 9. And that would leave behind x minus 1. Now the only way that factor by grouping works is if the same thing shows up in these two places right here. Doesn't really matter what it is, as long as it's the same thing in each place. Because then you can factor that out. If it shows up in both of them, you can go ahead and factor it out. So what would be left behind is x squared plus 9. If these two aren't the same, if one of them was x minus 1 and the other was x minus 7, then that means factoring just is not going to work. You're going to have to use another method. One other method is to use a graphing calculator. If you graph x is cubed minus x squared plus 9x minus 9, you'll see that x equals 1 is a root. Notice that there aren't any other places where it's equal to 0, just at x equals 1. So the way that you get that is you set these factors equal to 0 after you've got it factored. And this would mean that x is equal to 1. That's what the graph was showing me. If you finish this one, we'd have x squared equals negative 9. Take the square root of both sides and the square root of a negative 9. Well, because it's the square root of a negative, then that's imaginary numbers. Because it's the square root of 9, we would have plus or minus 3i. And that pretty much answers how many roots does it have. So there's three roots, one real and two imaginary. How many are real? Okay, just one. Then for something completely different, describe the end behavior. So for part C, the idea of the end behavior is we're not talking about when x equals 1 or 2 or 3, but way out here when x is in the hundreds or in the thousands. What's happening to the graph? Is it going up, 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 or is it going down, down, down? Well, you could Pick a number. We don't really have to use something in thousands. We could use something like 10 or 20 and figure out what's happening there. So if you were to plug in, let's go with 20. So 20 cubed minus 20 squared plus 9 times 20 minus 9. Well, if you look at these numbers, 20 cubed is huge. 20 squared is 400. So this, which is something like 8,000 minus 400 plus 180 minus 9. The numbers are just getting smaller and smaller and smaller. What's really controlling this thing is that 8,000 at the beginning. So it's pretty close to 8,000. Subtract 400, subtract a 9, but it's still really close to 8,000. So it's really that cube thing that matters that's controlling this. 
So this is saying it's a very big positive number. So when you're over here on the right, then it's really, really big. The reason I was emphasizing that the cube is what matters is because that's basically going to control the shape of the graph. And if it was just the x cubed function, well, the x cubed function looks like this. And so in general, the shape of this is going to be very similar. So if you were to use, say, negative 20, because now I need to find out what's happening on the left side, negative 20 cubed minus negative 20 squared plus 9 times negative 20 subtract 9 then it's again sort of close to 8,000 because this is again controlling it but then it's negative so then on this side I'd say as x goes to the right which we say as x goes to infinity as x goes to the right the function is going up f of x is going up to positive infinity. And then this one would be as x goes off to the left, so that's negative infinity, the f of x is going down. 